uh, green screens. I'm sure many people would love to know how to use green screens. I'm going to shorten this clip a little bit, just so it's easily manageable. In order to use a green screen, first of all, you have to have a nice green background. You come into the qualifier tab, you click this little qualifier button right here. You select close to the person gives the best results, so right on the edge. So let's turn on uh, the view, which is this button right here, the little magic one. And you can see the view of the whole thing. So this adjusts which color is keyed out. So I'm going to increase the width a little bit more. That's too much because it goes into the skin tones. There, there's a little spot in the corner, but you can fix that. See, it's cutting into my shirt now with the luminance qualifier. That is not good. All right, that, that's all right. Black clip adjusts the background, and then white clip adjusts the clipping on the person. So it just basically, you can make the edges a little nicer. So we come into here. Oh, you have to add an alpha output, and then drag this to the alpha output. So here, you see it's uh, keyed me out instead of the background. You just press this, and then it flops it. So, you see there's a little green there. I'm gonna actually come in here. I'm gonna move this up, and I'm gonna add this video underneath. And I'm gonna alt click to duplicate it. So let's just alt click and drag. Oh, it shows up in the timeline, but not in the color tab. Okay, so we're just gonna see there's a little bit of green on the outside, or clean, clean black. Yeah, clean black now. So you just wanna play around with it. And add a little bit of blur to the edges. So it's keyed out, okay. And then there's a little spot down here. You can actually fix that with a selection box. Then you come into the key tab. I forgot which. You just have to mess around with it a little bit. I forgot which one it is. There's a way where you can have it exclude the sides. Let me see if I can figure that out now. Okay, so I'm going to do it the opposite way and just have it include me instead of excluding the sides of it. There we go. That should be working now. Power window. Yeah. So it includes everything inside the power window and excludes everything outside the power window. And I believe to flip it, you can flip it somehow. I think, yeah, or one of these. You just play around with it until it gets the effect you want. Here's the background where it, you can have half the background, half not. Down here is a little preview of what is actually being keyed out. The white stuff is being in and the black is out. So yeah, here is you have a little bit of green down here. So you can come in and fix that with clean, clean black. I think so. Oh no. Oh, maybe I need to add it into the qualify thing. If you middle click on here, I can't do it because I have a macro set up right now. But if you middle click and hold and you can drag around the little window. Alright, let's delete this. Alright, this is a clip I have. Let me generate optimized media really quick. All right, so it's done optimizing media. So this is a pan out shot, a dark pan out shot. I'm gonna show you how to do some of the color correcting effects. So if you go into the color tab and select the clip, I usually like to hide it so I have a bigger preview area. 
but you can see the clips here. So first I would go into the color wheels, all of the motion effects and stuff. Yeah, the motion effects like noise reduction and motion blur disabled in the free version of Resolve, so you don't need this tab. I also like to come into Log, because it just gives a softer color correction than the regular color wheels. So I can change the entire mood. I don't like how the piece of cardboard that we used is kind of, you can see the texture of it. So I'm going to come here, I'm going to make two of them, I'm going to add another one with this. So you click this to make one, and you click add another one, add circle, polygon, curve, gradient, whatever you want. Come down here, I'm going to come into the blur radius and just blur it a little bit so you can't see that texture. Or I could even, I could get rid of both of these make a curve, so I have a curve going from down here to just around him, and you can track these curves with the footage, all the power windows you can track with the footage, so let's say I have like this, oh, how do I stop, okay, wait, oh, you have to connect them, okay, so I have this, and then I'm going to do everything outside of it. I think I have to come to the key and reverse it. Yeah, that's how I do it. Okay, so now it's selected everything outside. So you can come to blur and then blur it. See how you can kind of see the edges here. It doesn't follow the path exactly. So I'm going to come to where I started it at, which is about here. And I'm gonna track backwards. This is the window tracker, which uses the power window to track everything in your footage. So you see I'm tracking backwards. So it moves the power window with your footage. So it pans the power window with the footage that you have. Alright, so I have this part tracked. So I'm gonna come back to here. I started tracking backwards just because I started in the middle of the clip. And now I'm going to come to the part that I haven't tracked yet. I'm going to track forwards. So you see how it moves the power window with the objects in the clip. Okay, so now when you move the thing along, it moves the power window with the thing that you selected in the clip. So now you see that the edges are kind of uh, blurred, which is exactly what I wanted. I'm gonna actually blur these a lot more, or maybe not, because it's uh, around the side here. You can see a little bit, but it doesn't matter too much. So can I duplicate this? No. I'm just gonna add a node. I'm gonna do a box selection right here, and I'm gonna do some adjustments to the light. So this is the shadows. If you bring the shadows up too much, there's not a lot of detail capture in this, so it looks really horrible. But if you bring it down to about where it was, then boost it a little bit. Should be alright. And you can also use the color wheel. That's the shadows. These are the mids. And these are the highs. You can use the curves to adjust it. There's not many, like, you can see on the side of his face where the light shines is where it's in the high range. So you can adjust that. I can make it softer or make it like a harder light. And you can adjust the color. Probably shouldn't do a. a, a power window on that. I should probably just adjust the whole thing. This is a production. Can I? Alright. So I can boost the shadows, which I don't want to do because half of the image is shadow. 
and it would look terrible. The mids are really where he is, so I can boost those up a little bit. And the gain would be the two uh, lights on the side, and then the light cast on his face. So now it gives it a little bit of a red tint. So in order to counteract the red, you go in the opposite direction, which is towards blue, but not the shadows. So now it kind of looks a little green. You can just play around with this until you have a look that you like. See how it changed the light color to like blue. And you can come in and use a window, power window, and just change this so you can change that to like a red, blue, any color light. 